U.S. Farm Report, a rural area public relations program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this listening area and others interested in seeing the farmer receive a fair price for what he produces. Good morning. Welcome. We're here today to tell you something about the National Farmers Organization. For some several weeks, this has been our purpose in this time period. And you've heard from a number of experts, people from all over the country, explaining the problems of the farmers and how these problems can be met in uh, today's society. And we felt that it would be a good idea today to bring you some of your own neighbors to do some talking about the NFO and tell us what the problems of the farmers are right here in Tennessee and Kentucky. And so we have gathered together a representative group of people from throughout our Middle Tennessee, Kentucky area to tell us the answers to the problems and some of the problems themselves and to talk about the progress and the, uh, the uh, accomplishments of the NFO, the National Farmers Organization here. These gentlemen will be talking to us for the next half hour and we think that they have some things to say that will be of interest and importance uh, to you. First, we'd like to call on a gentleman from uh, Simpson, Simpson County, Kentucky, uh, who is the NFO County Chairman for Simpson County, Mr. Philip Landrum. Now, Mr. Landrum has the, uh, uh, is the man who signed up the first NFO member in Tennessee, and he's been uh, right on top of the progress of NFO in Tennessee from its very beginning. So, uh, Mr. Landrum, if you would, let's, let's take first things first and get you to give us a, a progress report on NFO as it stands in Tennessee today. Thank you, Bill. Uh, gentlemen, we're speaking of progress. Uh, that's what NFO stands for, for the farmer, is progress in agriculture. Uh, we've had a, sometimes have a little problem of getting that over to our fellow farmers, but uh, we think we'll eventually do it. We'd like to go back and give you a little uh, background on the progress of NFO from the beginning. Some 10 years ago, we had a few farmers out in the southern highway that was a little bit uh, dissatisfied with the prices they were receiving for their livestock at that time, and they decided to make some effort to uh, overcome the situation. So NFO developed uh, through their thinking, and they were farmers. They started uh, from the bottom of this thing and worked at every angle. They made a lot of mistakes, but they made a lot of effort, and we have progressed a lot from that. We have moved uh, from that little area now into approximately 26 states over the nation, which is uh, the best farming states in the United States, and uh, of course, uh, Tennessee is included in that group, which we're real proud of the work that's been done here in this state. Some uh, last July the 1st, we made our first effort to sign up members in Tennessee. Uh, we started in Robinson and Montgomery County. We signed the first member in Robinson County that was an official NFO member in Tennessee. Mr. J.B. Wiggins. He was our first member to start the ball rolling here in this state. And of course, we moved from there on into other counties. We've moved across the middle section of the state and have members now in all approximately 22 counties. And as the counties grow in membership, when we reach a, a, a number that we think is sufficient to organize the county and charter and elect the officers, we do that. The first county to charter in Tennessee was Hickman County. They uh, seemed to catch on fire down in that area and signed the members up real fast, so they elected their uh, officers for the first county in the state. And we have lots of members in this area now. Of course, we've made uh, progress in other fields. Of course, our object is to get a fair price for the farmer for his production, a price that will give him a reasonable profit over the cost of production. and. We were told to start with that this was impossible, but we've made wonderful accomplishments in this field. We are bargaining with processors. We have contracts signed with them for a fair price already. We have them activated those contracts, and we have other efforts that we are doing that we've made wonderful progress. In fact, we've made more progress as far as in the bargaining field in the past four or five months than we've made in the entire history of NFO. And uh, that kind of brings you up to date right now on some of the progress that has been made. So I'll turn it back to our sponsor. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Landrum, and that does bring us up to date, and that's that's a help to give us the uh, the picture as it as it has existed in the past, and and uh, to bring it up to uh, the the present day's time. Now, it seems that there are people other than uh, farmers uh, or full-time farmers who are interested in NFO. Uh, one of the requirements of uh, of voting membership in NFO is that you. Uh, make at least 50% of your livelihood from the farm and own, own property. But there are other memberships, as I understand it, that, uh, that uh, are in existence in NFO. And our next, uh, next gentleman who's going to do some talking for us, I believe, fits this category. He's a merchant. He's Mr. L.C. Fritchie. He's from down in Bedford County, Shelbyville, Tennessee. And he is not only a merchant, but he is the uh, uh, son of a merchant and the grandson of a merchant. Now, Mr. Fritchie is has a, a, a great and abiding love for wa Tennessee walking horses, as I guess just about everybody does down around Shelbyville particularly. And he loves to ride his horses, but he also uh, uh, is a merchant first and uh, is also a farmer sort of on the side. Mr. Fritchie, what, what does the NFO mean to uh, a merchant for one thing, who is eligible for uh, uh, associate membership in NFO, but also to a merchant who is not a member of NFO. What does it mean to a merchant? Well, I'll do my best to tell you what I think about it, Bill. Thank you. From my standpoint as a merchant, I derive my living, as you know, from uh, doing a farm supply business. I remember well being present in the business during World War One, and seeing the farmer sell their produce and where we sold them their supplies in my grandfather's business. And I remember the prices they received for, for corn and other produce. And uh, then we followed the farmer right down through the 20s into the Great Depression. And more farmers were ruined than any other segment of our population. And then with World War II, the, the prices rose after the Great Depression, and then come along the great federal government with all their frills of paying the farmer not to grow stuff. And we know what that means. I would like to point out along this time the price of manufactured part products. Regardless of the products, they have steadily increased in price in the last 50 years. And I cannot remember a single instant where the steel industry or the pencil industry or anybody else has come along and said, we haven't got a place to store products. What will you give us for a ton of steel or a carload of pencils? Well, they just don't say that. And I've never had, I've never met a manufacturer in my life that said, I got a note to meet, and I got to sell my shoes or my goods. What will you pay me today in cash? Every school child knows the answer. Stop making steel and anything else. Very simple, isn't it? And they do, they have a manufacturer's association. They certainly don't call it a union. Uh, the word union is only for labor. The free enterprise doesn't use the word. A very prominent farmer deriving his income from another source said to me, nothing with a union labor. This was an answer to my appeal to join the NFO. Well, now, have you ever noticed that the union and individual banks regard it, regulated by law to certain things which are good. They always tell you that the law will not allow them over 6%. And all my life, I've never heard a banker say, Fritchie, we have so much money on deposit, we can't loan it. What, will, what rate of interest will you pay you for some of this money today? But all my life, I've had Farmer Jones, Smith, and Brown say, Fritchie, I need some money today. What will you pay me from a seed? There has been many things tried to help the farmer. The dole by the federal treasury. It gets bigger, the farmers gets less in number, and the wealthy landlord soaks up the money. Even the Congress doesn't like the program. All they do is make it bigger in bureaucracy. Now, when a bank or manufacturer and merchant says no to the farmer, it's out. Take milk, for instance. It's simple. Do not produce any milk for a while, and the newspaper will cry, farmers are starving little babies. This will bring the milk around.
But have you ever had an undertaker say, John, your father now here on the, on the cooling board, he was a good fellow. He ain't got much money, so we're going to reduce the price of this funeral. We're all too well familiar with his speech. Our percentages and his cost and all that. Now here's where the NFO comes in as I see it. If we have a chamber of commerce in every county in our state and spend literally multiplied thousands of dollars in the industry, to get a payroll so that more and more farm people can engage in factory work to support the farms and family. This is, there's nothing wrong with honest labor in a factory. I worked in a factory myself. Oh, I got fired. The town, in the town where I live, it costs thousands of dollars for new plants to get the end result. Well, to get the end result, almost 2,000 farmers in our county are getting a fair price for their product. The merchants of our county could not supply the demand for their service and goods and supplies. Now, the government dole hasn't done this. The starving of farmers has not done it. The good it should is only the answer, a farmer to hold a product of meat, milk, and fiber. Hold it back and get the price. Glowing promises of candidates are like the chaff in the wind, but just hold a product for the price. Now, how can we get this being done today. There has been but one suggestion, and that is the National Farmers Organization, the NFO. Their policies, their program, when applied, will do for my business as a merchant what a new factory will do for my town. I'm not opposed to a new factory, but I am in favor of increasing the farmer's income. I, I firmly urge every merchant that does business with the farmer, direct or indirect, to lend their support to the NFO. I have their emblem on the door of my store, and I'm very proud of it. And Mr. Jay, I want to thank you for asking me here today to con consider coming to my town to the celebration, the greatest walking horse show in the world. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. President. And I don't think anybody would argue with uh, that being the greatest horse show in the world either. Now let's move along. We have heard from a farmer and a merchant. Let's go back and hear from another farmer now. This next gentleman comes from Williamson County, Thompson Station. Mr. Bob Finley, he's a farmer. He, uh, he raises cattle, uh, raises uh, grain, is what he describes as a, as a general farmer. And he is going to give us, from the farmer's standpoint, the uh, the the picture as it regards NFO and what it means to the farmer, particularly on prices, but also on some other areas too. So Mr. Finley, it's all yours. Bill, <clears throat> Bill people and farmers, businessmen have asked questions about what has NFO done for the farmer. I have here a number of leading meat processors, farm publications, and other marketing sources that have given NFO credit. This is statistic that has come out. Has given NFO credit for at least two dollars per hundred of the price rise in cattle, and four dollars per hundred increase in the price of hogs. Now, now, what has this done to the state as a whole? Now, this is the farmer. Total live weight in the state of Tennessee for the year of 19. 63. These are the figures. Tennessee had 385,931,000 pounds of hogs. The NFO increase, figuring it at $4 per hundred on these hogs, amounted to the farmers of Tennessee. This was take home pay $15,437,240. Now in Kentucky, out of 445,748,000 pounds of live weight, NFO price increase per hundred per this for that one year, for the six months I mean, had amounted to $17,829,920. Now for cattle in Tennessee, 
thousand pounds of live weight, price increase at two dollars per hundred has amounted to ten million eight hundred and ninety two thousand dollars. In Kentucky, it has amounted to twelve million six hundred and seventy two thousand two hundred dollars. Now that is figuring NFO marketing arrangements that have been in effect for only six months. This means that farmers and the economy of rural America have received over $737,856,000,000 from NFO marketing arrangements. This would pay the NFO dues for every farmer in the United States for eight years. Now, we have this comparatively to the feed grain program for 1964. In Kentucky, the farmers grew $24 million from the government. This was paid by the taxpayers. In the six-month period, price increase on hogs through NFO marketing arrangements amounted to $30 million. This was take-home pay. This, this, the taxpayers didn't have to pay any of this. In Tennessee, the feed grain program amounted to 17 and 7 tenths million dollars to the Tennessee farmers. To the amount of price increase for NFO marketing arrangements, we the farmers grew 26 million and three tenths, 26, 26 and three tenths million dollars in their hogs. Now, this shows what NFO has done through bargaining for the farmers. All right, sir. Thank you, Mr. Finley. That's a mighty big figures that you're talking about there, an awful lot of money that uh, is involved, as, uh, and the way I understand it, there can be more uh, bigger figures, and this is the goal as it, uh, as it progresses along. Now, our, our, next, uh, our next guest is Mr. Raymond Armiston, who is a farmer. He comes from over uh, about Gallatin, in that section of the country, from the county, and he is the assistant coordinator in the Nashville marketing area for NFO. Now, Mr. Armistead, one of the questions that uh, is asked concerning NFO and its, its uh, program and its policies is what does it do to the consumer? Uh, could you uh, give us your answer on that? Bill, we farmers are organized legally under an act of Congress passed in 1922 known as the Cap of All State Act. It gives all farmers, not just in one county, one state, one region of the country, but in our nation, the right to pool their production and to bargain collectively for it. Now, this same law has written into it protection for the consumer, and we should be thankful for the men who authored this bill, not only for giving we farmers the right to bargain collectively, but thankful for the consumer's sake that protection was written in for them because this law, the same law that gives us the right to bargain collectively for our farm production, says that we cannot ask for or receive a price that is illegal, illegal being determined by the Secretary of Agriculture, to be as a price over 100% of parity. The prices we're asking for are prices that we have received in the past many times for our farm production. When our expenses were not nearly the, the uh, range they are now. This price cost squeeze has driven literally thousands of farmers away from the farm. Now on this panel today, I'm the youngest farmer here. I'm also one of the youngest farmers in NFO in our county. I'm one of the younger farmers in uh, the county organization and one of the younger farming farmers, making a complete living from the farm. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember the good old days that uh, our forefathers speak about. Uh, it was my good fortune to get to start farming uh, in the early 50s, and my bad fortune to start in, at a time when this price cost squeeze was just beginning to really harden its effect. It started in March of 51, the economists tell us. I started farming in February of 51. I've never known anything except our farm prices to go down and our production costs to go up. One of the most heartening things about NFO is the fact that the younger farmers are joining it, the farmers who are uh, 
than ones who will produce the food and fiber for our nation in just a few short years. And Bill, I think our next guest has some interesting facts on the age of the people who are doing the producing in this uh, general area, not only for a county, uh, the facts first we're going to give you are for a county, but they will represent uh, age figures for our state and almost uh, representative of our nation. So uh, I'd like for you to pass this okay. on to him. All right, fine. Thank you, um, uh, Mr. Armistead. And our next guest is Mr. Herschel Ligon, who is the president of the Wilson County NFO. He's also chairman of the TV committee, and he uh, makes his home at uh, Mount Juliet. He's a farmer. So, Herschel, if you would, uh, tell us uh, some of the things that Raymond was talking about there. And, and uh, if you would also, I'd like to ask you to give us the picture on what it's going to take to uh, make NFO the success that I think all of you gentlemen would like for it to be. So it's all yours. Bill, you know, you have heard me say several times that uh, we've got to save this family farm. Well, I haven't given up. I've made up my mind when I came home from the war that I was going to fight for the family farm, and we are fighting, and it, it is a fight. I mean, a sure enough fight. Just so happened last night, I got some figures on the farmers in Wilson County. As you know, I have spent most of my life in Wilson County, reared there, born there. Uh, Wilson County has a few over 2,500 farmers. Half of those farmers are between 45 and 55 years of age. A fourth of them are over 65 years of age. Wilson County has less than 25 farmers that are under 25 years of age. The average age of the farmers in Wilson County is 54 years. Well, you know, I come in the bracket of the, of the half of the farmers in Wilson County, and there are people passing away my age and younger. I wonder what's going to happen to this farm situation if more young farmers don't start farming. Of course, the reason they aren't farming is because they just can't make a living at it. You can't blame them. I'm not going to, I just can't conscientiously encourage my boys to farm because they just can't make a living at it. And I only hope is NFO. I didn't jump into NFO overnight. I investigated and investigated, and I found just too many intelligent people with good character for NFO not to be right. Uh, a lot of people are asking the question, uh, as you know, uh, our ultimate goal is to sell our production under contract. And we find people here and there, well, when are you going to go to sell it under contract? Well, that's pretty simple. Just as soon as enough farmers in the United States understand collective bargaining, which we are doing, as soon as they understand it's collective bargaining and sign with NFO, we'll have enough production signed up and we'll go to sell it under contract. Uh, I might say, it's, it's like these farmers running out in Wilson County. Time is running out with us. We've got to move, we've got to move fast if we intend to save the family farm. But you can bet we've got thousands and thousands of farmers that intend to save this family farm. And we are fighting, and we're not going to give up, and we're going to win this battle. First, uh, I know as a matter of policy that you don't... Uh give out the exact number of members that you have, but you're talking about uh, when it gets to the point that uh, uh, you can uh, uh, go under a marketing arrangement, would you say that, that this time is in sight uh, in the near future for our area? Very much so. Very close. It's just going to take a little extra effort right through this big push to get the job done. Like when you get nearly to the top of the hill, that last few feet getting over the top's the hardest. Huh? We've we got to get that second <laughs> wind right quick. <laughs> All right, I, I got a couple of questions, gentlemen. We've got about four or five minutes left here, and I've got a couple of questions that I wanted to ask. One to you, Mr. Fritchie, if I may. You were talking about the farmer having to go to somebody and say, what will you give me for my, for my uh, product? Is this problem getting worse with the farmer today? Can you no see a noticeable difference? Uh, is, is the farmer having to having to get out on his knees worse than he, than he has in, in, in recent years or in years past to, to get a, a reasonable price for his product? Yes, because, because.
because of this surplus business, and, uh, of course, uh, I don't mean to say that some fellows are not intelligent, but when you find a fellow that's been reading up just a little bit and he has got into the NFO, and, uh, well, he don't, uh, he don't uh, cow around like they used to. They begin to wake up. It's just a question of them waking up. Now, it's very easy to trim a fellow for a dollar, you know, if, uh, if he lets you. And, of course, I, I'm not past that, you know. I, I belong to the free enterprise system, too. But uh, 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 on a whole, the fellows that are left in the farming business are getting more intelligent, uh, far, far more intelligent than they were, and they begin to wake up. And when you back a fellow up against the wall and he's got a truckload of grain, uh, by golly, he's got to fight to get something for it. And it's awful easy to say, well, it's off grade, it's off this, it's off that. So you don't do that as much as you used to. And then if all gives him uh, He gives to him to with. lean on. Yeah. And if they'll all join, then they'll get there. Yes, Mr. Landrum. Something I'd like to add to that. Uh, one of the things that's a great problem to go along with what he just said, the people that buy our product are more highly organized and larger monopolies that we're dealing with than we've ever dealt with in the history of agriculture. So w they are they're set to, to clean us. I mean, they, they, they control the business. And we as individuals have no bargaining power, but as a group, we have the greatest bargaining power in the world. It's okay. a matter of for the farmers and self-preservation. That's put right. It that way. That's right. Uh, I, I think it might be interesting if somebody would like to uh, tell us uh, Mr. Landrum earlier was talking about the, the first charter in Tennessee was in Hickman County. Uh, is there an area or is there a county that, that stands out now as being one of the most active or one of the best organized in, in NFO? Or, or are they all so similar that none is a standout? Would you like to hit that, Mr. Landrum, or anybody? I, I, it just occurred to me this might be a, a, an interesting thing. I know Herschel's very... Uh, 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 active over in, in Wilson County, and I don't know whether he can take credit for having one of the best counties or not. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, we don't uh, work in NFO as individual counties or individual states. It, we work as one united group. And, of course, we have some counties that are maybe a little stronger, a little more active than others, but we don't like to pick them out. We like to go as a group. Good. Because that's, that's where our power is. See, that's the reason we're in the condition we are today. We have been individuals too long. Fine. So you got everybody working together, not individuals, not counties, not state, everybody, the farmers as a whole. We're not throwing any roads to any individual or individual county. We're working as a group. Mighty fine. A national organization. Gentlemen, I think that's, uh, that's probably a, a good note to end uh, this discussion on today, and particularly since our time has run out, I want to thanks to all of our guests for being with us. Gentlemen, your comments have been most interesting and informative, and thanks to you for joining us today on this program. U.S. Farm Report, brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation, has been presented by members of the United Farmers Organization and others interested in seeing the farmer receive a fair price for what he produces.